Hello, everyone. I'm presenting our paper, Pushdown VB, Accelerating a DBMS Using S3 Computation. This work is a collaboration between multiple institutions, including University of Wisconsin-Madison, Burnian, which is a software engineering company in Melbourne, Australia, MIT, Qatar Computing Research Institute, and the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Today, many database systems are moving to the cloud. Cloud databases can be cheaper than on-prem databases. This is primarily due to econom economies of scale, where cloud service providers can substantially reduce cost by deploying servers in millions. Meanwhile, cloud databases can also be better than on-prem databases because the cloud has virtually infinite storage and, and computation resources offers a pay-as-you-go model, can support geo-distribution, and offers simpler administration for end users. In recent years, a large number of cloud databases have emerged for both transaction processing and data warehousing. We expect the trend to continue in the near future. A traditional database typically has a shared nothing architecture where each server contains local CPU, memory, and storage. The servers are connected using a shared network. A cloud database, however, commonly adopts the, sh uh, the storage disaggregation architecture, which is more similar to the shared disk rather than the shared nothing architecture. The compute nodes and the storage nodes are disaggregated, and each site can scale independently. Disaggregation allows the compute nodes to be deployed based on the workload's requirements. As queries are executed in the compute nodes, data is loaded from the storage nodes. The local memory or storage in the compute nodes can be used for temporary data or caching, but not for permanent storage of input data. Compared to share nothing, the disaggregation architecture can substantially reduce cost. This is because a share nothing architecture needs to deploy virtual machines all the time, while a disaggregation architecture deploys virtual machines only when there are queries. Otherwise, only the storage service is paid, which is much cheaper than the cost of virtual machines. Another advantage of disaggregation is that the cloud storage provides higher availability by default, improving the reliability of the database. However, one challenge of the disaggregation architecture is the frequent data movement over the network between the computation and the storage layers. The limited network bandwidth can severely limit the performance, causing a disaggregated database to underperform a shared nothing database. Pushdown DB targets this exact limitation of the disaggregation architecture the design follows a main tenet of database systems, which is to keep computation close to storage. Pushdown DB leverages the computation near the cloud storage to push certain database operators down. This significantly reduces network traffic, which leads to performance improvement. The project tries to address a few key questions. First, how to efficiently push computation down by leveraging existing cloud services, and what are the performance and cost trade-offs of computation pushdown. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first extensive study of pushdown computing for database operators in a disaggregated architecture. Pushdown DB is deployed on AWS and has a few major building blocks. The compute node is a single EC2 virtual machine with R4 8x large instance type, which has 32 virtual CPUs, 244 gigabytes of main memory, and a 10 gigabit ethernet. We use AWS S3 as the storage layer. S3 recently announced a new feature called S3 Select, which supports limited SQL queries on data of CSV and Parquet format. The computation happens near S3 and is charged based on the amount of data scanned and returned. 
pushdown db is implemented using python and the source code is open and available on github the current version of S3 Select supports only filtering, projection, and aggregation without group by. In pushdown DB, we use the, these basic operators to push down more advanced uh, operators to the storage. Pushdown DB supports top K, join, and group by aggregation. For the rest of this talk, I will briefly discuss the implementations of join and group by. There are three versions, versions of join in pushdown DB. In the baseline join, the server loads both tables from S3 to the compute node and performs join locally. No computation uh, is pushed down in this case. In filter join, the server uses S3 select only for scanning the table with filtering predicates. Uh, if the predicate is uh, selective, then the return to data is smaller than the original table size. In Bloom join, the join operation contains two steps. In step one, the server loads the smaller table from S3 with predicates pushed down. It builds a Bloom filter based on the join key of the table. The Bloom filter is designed such that it can be expressed using SQL in S3 select. Then in step two, the server sends the Bloom filter together with other predicates to load the second table. Once both tables are loaded, the join operation is performed locally. The bottom of this slide shows how an example Bloom filter is expressed using S3 select. Please note that we encode the bit array as a string of zeros and ones, since binary encoding is not supported in today's S3 select. We compare the runtime and cost of all the three join algorithms using the SQL query at the bottom of this slide. For Bloom join, we sweep the fast pass rate of Bloom filter. For the query cost, we show the breakdown across different categories, including compute cost of the virtual machines, cost of sending S3 requests, and the costs of scanning and transferring data using S3 select. For the particular query, with a fault positive rate of about 0 0.001, we get the maximum speed up and cost reduction. Next, we discuss how pushdown DB supports group by using S3 Select. We will explain the process using the example query on this slide, which reports the sum of account balance for each, no, uh, for each nation. For the baseline implementation, the table is simply loaded to the compute node where the entire query processing is done. One way to exploit S3 select is to push entire group by operation to S3. This can be done in two steps. In step one, we use a simple S3 select query to obtain all the C nation key column, which is the grouping column, and unique values are extracted from the column. Then in step two, we use the S3 select query at the bottom of the slide to perform remote aggregation. Since S3 select does not support group by, we use the case statements to perform sum on each individual group that was identified in step one. This solution works well when the number of groups is relatively small. Otherwise, the second S3 select query contains a large number of case statements, which increases the computation burden in S3 and Hertz performance. So for this particular reason, we develop a hybrid group by implementation that splits the computation burden between S3 and the server. The algorithm contains three steps. Step one uh, was still the same as before, where the grouping column is loaded using S3 select. In step two, we perform S3 side group by only for groups that contain a large number of values rather than all the groups. For example, if C nation, uh, C underscore nation key equals zero contains a majority of the values, then only this group is aggregated remotely. Then in step three, 
we load all the other values from S3 to the server to perform aggregation locally. The hybrid approach avoids excessive S3 side computation by pushing only a small number of popular groups, yet it can effectively reduce network traffic by aggregating these large groups remotely. Note that in step two and three, uh, they can be performed in parallel without incurring an extra round trip latency. To evaluate group by, uh, we created a synthetic table with 100 groups. The size of each group follow, uh, follows a Ziffin distribution where we sweep the level of skewness. When the workload is more skewed, we observe that the hybrid group by achieved the performance improvement of 31% compared to filtered group by, which pushes only filtering predicates to S3, but not aggregation. In terms of cost, however, hybrid group by costs more since it must scan the table multiple times. Once to load the grouping key column, once to perform remote aggregation for popular groups, and finally, once to load the rest of the groups. Note that these extra scans are an artifact of today's limitation of S3 Select. The implementation can potentially improve if we can design a richer API for S3 Select. Finally, this slide shows the performance comparison between baseline pushdown DB that does not use S3 Select and the optimized pushdown DB that does use S3 Select. We report individual operators, including filtering, group by, top K, and join. We also report the performance of a subset of TBCH queries. Both the runtime and cost breakdown are reported here. Overall, by exploiting S3 Select, pushdown DB can reduce the runtime by 6.7 times and reduce the cost by 30%. In the paper, we also discussed a few suggestions to S3 that can potentially further improve the performance. Specifically, we discussed the support of multiple byte ranges for each S3 GET request, adding indexing to S3, supporting more efficient Bloom filters, supporting partial group by, and offering a computational aware privacy model. So please read the paper if you're interested in these details. Finally, I want to point out that we are still actively developing pushdown DB today. Uh, we are currently rewriting the code base using C++ to improve performance. We are developing a workload specific caching policy. Uh, so tables that are frequently accessed don't need to be loaded from S3 uh, each time. And finally, we are also investigating techniques to support caching and pushdown computation in one single design. So to conclude, cloud databases are shifting from share nothing architecture to the storage disaggregation architecture, primarily due to lower cost. Although the networking is getting faster, it is still beneficial to push computation close to storage to reduce network traffic. By pushing computation to storage through S3 Select, pushdown DB reduces runtime by 6.7 times and reduces cost by 30%. And more details of the design can be found in our extended paper following the link on the slides. And feel free to email us for any questions or comments. Thank you very much.